distress, how shall we answer? We cannot pass by as though nothing is wrong. said that to truly love you, then I must also love my neighbor. This can be difficult when our lifestyles clash or we disagree on things, but it is in overcoming those difficulties that we truly see the miracle. We are all flawed. We are all different, but you love us just the same. May we see people through your eyes and see them like we see ourselves. Not perfect or finished, but a work in progress that will be completed in due time by your hands. Lord, teach us to be good neighbors, not just to those who live nearby, but to everyone we meet. That we may see the best in them and want the best for them. Help us to put aside preconceptions about other people, for that alters our behavior and causes us to be disobedient to your call. Today we ask that you bless the good neighbors who check that all is well, those who share a cup of tea and chat with the sick and shut-in. Their gentle act of service brings a ray of light 
into a day that may otherwise be cheerless. Lord, help us all to be this way. You call us to help those who are struggling. Where we see a need, may we stop and lend a helping hand, a listening ear, compassion, and love. Remind us, Lord, that our neighbors are also those who live in tents and shelters, refugee camps, subways, parks, and prisons. The hungry, the desperate, and even the angry who feel ignored are all our brothers and sisters through Christ. We pray that we can remember your words clearly when we come across those children with these struggles. And finally, we ask that you bless those whose eyes are open, searching for ways to put their faith to action, helping those in need. May we all be blessed enough to bless others. We offer these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning is from Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 through 37. <clears throat> listen to God's word for you today. Now a lawyer stood up and tested him saying, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. He said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus answered, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among the thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. By chance, a priest came down that way and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to that place, looked at him and passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. Then he set him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said to him, take care of him. I will repay you whatever else you spend when I return. Now which of these three do you think was a neighbor to him who fell among the thieves? He said, the one who showed mercy on him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Ensemble. We're missing a couple of folks this morning, but thank you for the gift of leading us in worship. Beautiful. Please pray with me. Creator God, you know the needs in our hearts. You also know what is in our minds. You know how much we long to believe that on this Sunday you're calling us to rise and to shine and to be good Samaritans. The coming of the Holy Spirit has been with us. And so we invite this morning that it will move within us. That it will guide us to places that we do not expect to be today that would invite us to meet people that we have never met before, and yet with open arms and open hearts, that we will welcome them as brothers and sisters, for that is our desire. To that end, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts draw us ever closer to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Every once in a great while, there is a story that changes the world. And in the Bible's narratives, the Good Samaritan is that story. 
Back in March, ABC ran a news about a couple of good Samaritans, Saginaw County. They were heading somewhere. And unfortunately, as they are heading to do things that they have planned to do, they made some changes in despair of the moment. They saw the aftermath of a crash in a very busy road on a Saturday evening. One of the couple was going to dinner with her, his wife. The other one was planning to go shopping, a light shopping day with his girlfriend. But they knew that they had to stop and they knew that they had to try and help. There's also the Great Samaritan Center in Detroit Eastside. Happens to be the largest Michigan not-for-profit multi-service community center. It offers a variety of proactive healthcare education, children, other physical and mental social services. In our own Farmington Hills, we have the Good Samaritan Counseling Center. Many of you know that your former pastor, Pastor Sue Melrose, her husband, Paul, was in the counseling staff of the counseling center. And Sally Kirsten, our own Sally Kirsten, was in the office, front office. I believe she was the administrator of the front office. When I think about these organizations and these situations unfolding in our own very lives, I wonder how many trillions of dollars of charitable giving this one story from Jesus has inspired. How many countless acts of human kindness has ever evoked for anyone of us here today that touched the world and made it a better place in which to live. Even people who are not God followers or believers have studied and appreciated this ethical teaching from Christ. So by now, in the Gospel of Luke, we begin to feel that there is some growing tension between Jesus and the ruling religious ruling authorities of the day because of his fresh perspective and his new approach to understanding and interpreting the law of Moses. And as a result, there is a shift in the attention from themselves. If you go back to Luke's gospel in chapter 5, Jesus invites a tax collector to be one of his disciples. And then he proceeds to go to a gathering, a party of these tax collectors, and then others, sinners, so to speak. In the following chapter 6, Jesus heals a man of a weather hand, happens to be on a Sabbath in a synagogue. Then in chapter 7, Jesus heals a servant of a Roman centurion. And later on in the same chapter, he attends a dinner party at one of the most outstanding Pharisee leaders in the community. And then Jesus allows a woman to weep carelessly over his feet. And then Jesus proceeds to say that she was behaving more appropriately than they were as a host. So, what do you think happened? It was time to call an expert. And so the lawyer comes and asks a very important question. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, Luke tells us that this question was not a personal inquiry, like anybody coming to me and saying, hey, Eddie, what do you think about? No. Luke tells us very clearly that this was a test. So, annoyingly, Jesus answered the questions with two questions of his own. Not one, right, but two. 
So Jesus looks at the lawyer and goes around and says, okay, what is written in the law? And how do you read it? Wasting no time, the lawyer goes right to the heart of things and quotes two scriptures that are recited every single day at temple. The Shema. Hear, O Israel, the God, our Lord, God is one. Love your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And in the same breath, the lawyer, being wise, said, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, yes, absolutely right. Do this, and you will live. Simple enough. Love God? Checked. Just like Gerald said in the prayer, right? Love your neighbor? Yes. Most of the time. <laughs> and then, wishing to be justified himself, the lawyer asked another question. By the way, if anyone is a lawyer in this house, this is not about you, right? <laughs> Just want to make sure that you don't feel feeling like, ouch. So he asked another question. He says, well, who is my neighbor? And in response, Jesus then tells a very human, good Samaritan story. And at the end of the story, Jesus poses a question back to the lawyer. Which of the three do you think was the neighbor of the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Well, the answer to us is very obviously, right? It is the Samaritan, the most unlikely of people. But I think it would be at this time really appropriate to pause for a moment and let us check the scene which is the road to Jericho, right? So the road to Jericho is a path from Jerusalem to this place called Jericho. Steep, very narrow, it's rocky, it's very a dangerous path. It drops 3,600 feet in a 17 mile stretch, so you know it's pretty steep. Happens to be the breeding grounds for all kinds of thieves to prey on innocent travelers. Tim Keller is a Presbyterian minister and author, and he describes the Joe to Jericho saying, it was like walking through a dark valley in the worst part of a modern city, except that it was many miles away from the nearest streetlight. So the Jericho Road is a place where people are robbed of their dignity, robbed of their love, of their value as human beings, of food and clothing. The Jericho Road is any place where loneliness is endemic, where people sleep on the street, where suffering and oppression is widespread. Martin Luther King Jr. said, on the one hand, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that would only be the initial act. One day, Dr. King says, one day we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men, women, and children are not constantly beaten 
and rob as they make their journey in their life on life's highway. And I will add today to Dr. King's observation, I would add murder as they sit on a classroom or as they sit with their parents or relatives along any main street in America to watch a 4th of July parade. Here on the road to Jericho, the Lord confronts you and I and asks us, will we love our neighbor as ourselves or we will just love ourselves? Will we spend ourselves on behalf of others or will we just pass by squandering the opportunities for good works that God has given to us. So after we have a little bit of an understanding and learn about who is my neighbor, I'd like for us to consider another question. And that is, Am I behaving as a neighbor? Jesus asked, Who was the neighbor of the man attacked by robbers? Now, I don't know if you were able to pick this up, but the perspective flipped there. It was reversed. You see, we don't need to divide those that we meet into two groups. Who we should love and who should not we love. In our story today, the Samaritan not only takes care of the immediate needs of the wounded person by bandaging the wounded, but goes on to pour oil <clears throat> pours oil and wine on the wounds, picks up the man and puts it on his own donkey, takes him to the nearest inn, takes care of him that evening, making sure that he would just get through that evening and be stable, and then leaves money with the innkeeper to the Nares. That's two full days of pay. Then he says that he will return, and not only return, but that he will pay for any extra expenses incurred. You see, the Good Samaritan doesn't weigh the pros and the cons of the situation. He jumps right into action and gives instruction to provide the necessary provisions for this man. The parable causes us then to see all of these acts so that we can recognize ourselves in those moments as well of healing and of transporting someone, of watching over someone, of advocating for that person, and then also returning to make sure that things have been done right all I'm saying is that action speaks louder than words, church. The Samaritan is an illustration for us today to understand the fullness of how to love one another. Chose to see the need was the first thing. When he saw the stranger, he took pity on him, but he just didn't look away. You see, loving the Lord God with all our heart means allowing God then to touch our emotions and then saturate our soul with compassion. So when we encounter brokenness, 
The love of Christ wells up in us, and we respond. We don't retreat. Chose to see the need. The second thing is that the Samaritan opened his own heart and hands. And he chose to answer the man's cry and then proceeds to take immediate action. Sympathy is feeling bad for another person's plight, but compassion always involves action. The Samaritan was aware of the danger and the inconvenience of helping the robbed man, but nevertheless, he reached out and he went to his way. So number two, open heart and mind and hands. The third thing is that he overcame the difference. Our neighbor is the person that God has placed in front of us. Not just the person next to our house. And no matter how different, how inconvenient, or how unexpected, we are asked to love. The Good Samaritan Cross, political, racial, cultural, and social barriers because he saw the need. Didn't matter if you're red or blue, it didn't matter. He simply saw the need and realized that he had enough of resources to care and attend for those needs. Choose to see, open heart and hand, overcame differences, and the fourth is that refused to give up. The good Samaritan didn't just patch up the injured man on the side of the road and just kept moving. He put him on his donkey. And then he took care of him to the nearest inn. And then he was willing to pay for anything that needed to be taken care of. He gave two days of his own income. And then he promised. He didn't have to do this. But then he promised to pay for any additional expenses incurred. When he would come back. We are in this season of vacation. And I'd like for us to remember as we travel to somewhere that in spite of the risk that we are called to care as much as we desire to be cared for, that we must not live arm's length And so that in this season of Pentecost, for you and for me, for us, the Church of the Open Hands, then to be be able to share the good news about the inclusive love of God in and through and with Jesus Christ. Because when we do that, not if, but when we do that, Jesus is going to say to you, Go and do likewise. Church, let's go and do likewise. Maybe so for you as well as for me. Amen. Amen. And as we do likewise, church, let us present our tithes and our offerings so that the ministry of the open hands, open mind, open hearts, and open hands will be able to be enriched and continue to give more and still be the good Samaritan, not only in our own village of Farmington Hills and Farmington, but to be able to be spread out, spread out to our nation and to this beautiful earth that we call home. 
Let's present our tithes and our offerings. So the prayers of the people of God, the circle of gratitude. Let me begin with the ones who were handed just this morning. <laughs> uh, Mitchell always try to remind us that the monarch butterflies are starting to to do what, Mitchell? To notice our Oh. Okay. And, and that is uh, a lot of thanks given to Georgia Road and to you, Mitchell, as well, and to our uh, preschool children who have uh, beautified two islands and planted a lot of milkweed. So pay attention to the growth uh, in those two uh, beautiful redecorated islands, by the way. Nancy wants to tell us that a family member of hers is going through a divorce. Very sorry about that, Nancy. And she's asking for us to support her and that family member to guide him as well as the children and also the spouse that will be unfortunately separated. We will remain faithful to you and to uh, your family friend as well. Prayers for Officer Lauren Courts and... His family. Am I saying this right? Lauren Quartz. And who submitted this prayer, by the way? Uh, who? Officer Lauren Court? Detroit Police. Detroit Police. Oh, oh, yes. Thank you. I'm embarrassed. Uh, this just happened this weekend. Uh, this uh, police officer of the Detroit Force uh, lost his life while doing service. Thank you, Marsha, for that reminder. We also want to pray for Beverly Adams. Last week we mentioned that her husband Dale uh, tragically uh, moved from life to the more life. Uh, and so the funeral memorial services have been scheduled for Sunday, August the 7th, right here at 7.30. I think they were married for over some 60 years, both Beverly and Dale. For Tom and Kathy Neal, who are here together, we pray for your granddaughter Lydia, giving birth to a young lady called Nova, meaning star, uh, after a little rough entry, uh, both mom and daughter are doing much better. Good news. Curly Kaler went through a second breast cancer surgery. Spoke with her just a couple of days ago. At home, recovering, feeling really much better. Grateful for your phone calls and your notes. Uh, Checking with her and Howard as well. So thank you for praying for Curly and Howard. Leslie Van Hammy, we continue to support her in her recovery. Don Archie's father, doing a little better after suffering at TIA. Lynette Bressling went back to Florida to be with her uh, children and grandchildren to attend her mother's funeral services. Uh, Margaret Williams, she is on her way back, so traveling mercies to Lynette. Joanne Boy, uh, for those of you, uh, Joanne uh, not here today because she is, as we speak, moving from her condo to Rolling Hills senior village living on the, um, I believe it's on Haggerty and uh, Maple. It's a new senior living there. She's excited about her new residences. It's a beautiful place. Uh, so uh, 
Keep her in mind, she's been working really hard, so most likely physically and emotionally tired, but really looking forward to a new chapter in her life. My wife, Pan, is not here with you today. Uh, her dad, my in-law, uh, Eugene, we call him Poppy, he passed away last Friday. He made a final transition from this life to more life. She's been in Maryland for over a week. She'll remain there. Services will be this coming Saturday in Bethesda, Maryland. She wanted me to read the following to many of you, all of you. It said, deepest gratitude for all the text and heartfelt showers of love and prayers. It is surely God's providence, this love. And Penn wishes us all the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. Friends, uh, a little more of difficult news again. We encounter a community in our own nation plagued with gunfire and violence. So we pray for the community of Highland Park and the seven people and the 40-some families that were impacted by this, again, no nonsense of gun violence. We pray for the family of Wayland Walker and the community. Continue to be faithful for the uh, global outreach to end the war in Ukraine. And we joyfully join our Muslim siblings around the world as they observe Hajj, I believe it's pronounced. H-A-double-J. Hajj, right? Happens to be the pilgrimage that they do to Mecca. It's a required pilgrimage at least once a year to the believers. Okay? No, once in a lifetime. Yeah, once in a lifetime to the believer. And that is, uh, they circle around the Kaaba. And as they circle the Kaaba seven times, they do supplications, prayers. They believe that that is uh, the pilgrimage right, that uh, Prophet Muhammad undertook. And also Abraham and Ishmael. So let's pray for our brothers and sisters as they do this pilgrimage and also pray, not just for themselves, but for the whole world. Do we have any other prayers of the people? If not, can we pray? Please join me in prayer. Great God in heaven, you remind us to focus our ability on first loving you. Then, you urge us to reflect that love toward our neighbor. We desire to be the modern day Good Samaritan. Create anew in our hearts a burning desire to care for your children. Encourage us to follow the caring ways that Jesus taught. Multiply these tithes and offerings so acts of acceptance and hospitality are extended through our ministry to all of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
sure that they receive your name and you will like to contribute to enhance our hospitality time um, based something at home. Uh, that would be a wonderful offering for us. Uh, it doesn't have to be a calorie um, plus. We can have fruit, uh, some nuts, some light things so that we can stay healthy, in good shape. But whatever you bring, it would be a wonderful contribution to our hospitality time uh, after the worship. Presbyterian women are having finally a gathering this July 29th. You see there the information in the bulletin as well. And then we continue to collect the roof at the center, um, some of the uh, poetry and also some of the, uh, what else are we doing? Um, are we done with the uh, cereal dry for me? which are starting to meet uh, this August. I believe it is that uh, Peter's of Robinson who began to collect uh, uh, all the juices for us. Thank you. If you have questions, well, just meet with me in your coffee time, hospitality, and she'll guide you to the right uh, place that we can bring these gifts and contributions. By the way, I want to just mention that uh, the efforts for the fundraising event concert that happened here uh, last month for the Ruth Ellis Center was a smashing success. We have about 90 people in a worship uh, concert that evening. And I believe that the numbers are about 3400 dollars in total for the race that evening because of the of so many of the guests for the Ruth Ellis Center. And then please don't forget, okay, uh, go smart. Uh, if you can follow the directions in this uh, flyer, there is a website. Uh, there are, uh, Four, I believe, uh, webinars that have been offered. I attended one last Friday, uh, next one is Saturday. But if you go and register, it tells you about what's happening with the state of Michigan with uh, voting rights. Uh, and you'll hear from the state uh, itself what is right, what is not right, what is legal, what is not legal, what is not here said. I would encourage you to share this with your neighbor, be a good neighbor of life. And let them know about uh, what is going on in the state of Michigan uh, as we get ready to go uh, up and coming this August and later on in the fall. And then the last is Vanya uh, Saxon, for many years, faithful servant of the Lord, uh, is preparing herself to move from here to go back to Bulgaria. Uh, she wants to have a second chance of being a teacher uh, <coughs> with children. She was a teacher at certification for being a teacher. And before coming to the country here, she was teaching little children back at home in the area. She made a decision, I want to have a second chance at living my dreams again. So she is heading to the area on the 21st of this month. Uh, you have the address here. Uh, if you had a friendship relationship with her, she'd love to hear from you. Drop her a letter from time to time. Let her know that you're so great for the final that she did for many years in this church. Now that we're looking for someone to replace her, so if you know someone, let me or the one office know that you know someone is having a call and will be delighted to see you. Thank you for those of you that come watching us in worship. One last thing, we apologize deeply that from time to time our Wi-Fi will be dropping the live stream. I wish I would know more what to tell you. I see on my paper, but maybe the, the content team is working really hard to figure out what's going on that it starts and also it just poof, it comes off. It's a serious matter. We want to tell you those who are home, members and friends that we love you and are faithful to you watching us. We'll get to the source of the issue and we'll let you know very soon uh, that we fix it. With that, all of you are guests today at home and here. Thank you for worshiping with us. And make sure that you know who are guests here, that they walk in with you for fellowship time so they can get to know us and them. Let's do it. Let's conclude our time.
made 